Hi, my name is Daniel Walker and I'm the Hardware Product Manager for the Philips Dynalight Portfolio. And today what I'm looking forward to showing you is the Philips Dynalight Kings of Dali demo case. With this case, we're looking to show how it is that Dynalight can enhance a Dali network, really taking it beyond the typical a sensor sees an occupant, a sensor turns on lights, but showing how these advanced features can be adopted to just about any project application and really showing about how it is that the Dynalight system adds value to Dali by being so much more than a simple standalone function. With this case, we will go through different times of the day, looking about how it is that the system responds to inputs from sensors, whether they be occupancy, light level detection, and also showing how the user interfaces will change and adapt depending about the time of day application. We have a floor plan across the top showing different areas, and we're going to be able to show how it is that those areas can interact, and the control system is going to turn around and drive those lights as required for the occupants. With this case, when we first power it up, it'll go through and just run a quick chase sequence showing the individual lights turning on and off, and also showing the tunable white, the standard color light, and the RGB luminaires as they go through. Really sort of showing that this is an individually addressable system, and it's a true DALI network, not something that we're simulating in the background. To begin the demonstration, we simply press any button here on the presenters panel, and it's going to push the system into a morning mode. Now in the morning mode, we have the tunable white lights set to a very cool color so that we're able to energize the staff as they first walk in. The RGB lights are set to blue, so we can turn around and really show the mode of which the system is set to. And the areas are running off their occupancy sensor, so when they're not seeing an occupant, they switch them off. When we move one of our sensor covers here, so for area A, it's going to turn on those lights, and then the timeout will simply be set for 10 seconds. From the presenters panel, we can adjust this timeout so that now it is going to be for two seconds. So now if we change to area B, we see the lights come on. And then when we um, cover that back over, we should see these lights switch off quite quickly. This is a demonstration about how the Dynalight sensors are dynamic. Even though they're configured to be able to meet the requirements within an area, we can send them a message, whether that be from scheduling, whether that be from a user interface, changing their characteristics to better match the requirements of that zone, whether the timeout be long or short. Next areas we have is our kitchenette area. So within this, we have a combination of tunable white and normal um, fixed color lamp. But we have a single user interface here, and so we have the color temperature set quite high, and so this is why we're seeing these lamps set quite cool. If we lower the color temperature, we can ramp that down, and we can see how these lamps go warmer, and then ramp that back up and see how they go cooler. And then independently, we can ramp that whole area up and down individually from a second set of buttons. This is showing how the Dynalight system is able to coordinate color temperature and the lamp intensity separately. We're still able to turn around and select presets so we can press a warm cool setting or we can turn the lights off completely. So from this one station, we're able to show ramping of uh, color temperature, ramping of level, selection of presets, and turning the lamps off from a preset. The next demonstration is our reception panel. So from here, we have like a floor control. And so we can turn around and ask for the lamps across reception to be a different color. We can change the color of the, um, the lounge areas. So we can go through and scroll through and uh, the lounge colors, forcing them into a different color. We can also turn on and off the different areas around the uh, office. And we can show how it is that from this one station, we have toggle control over the entire floor, and we have that centralized location to be able to control multiple areas regardless of where that may be. We also have control over the boardroom, so that if we want to be able to turn on the lights in the boardroom, we can show that we can select a preset scene, um, but we also can show that when we select a boardroom preset, it is also communicating to another user interface and updating that button status. So this is showing communication between the user interfaces as well as showing how they are operating within the room. And then when we go through and turn off those lights in the room, the reception panel will also update. So this is showing intercommunication between the network devices, making sure everything is in sync and making sure there's clear communication to the users about what the system status is. So for the next mode, we're going to show the area going into afternoon. 
This is going to push the system into a different timeout periods and a different preset table. What we mean by a preset table is that now the sensors are going to be calling preset scenes from 100% to 10%. So that when the area is unoccupied, the lighting is set to a very low level, as this may be an occupational uh, requirement within the area. And then when the sensor detects an area or detects an occupant within that area, it will then drive the lights to 100%. And then likewise, when they time out, it is going to drive the lighting back down to that 10%. So previously we saw how we can change the timeout period. Now we're showing how the sensors can recall a different scene, depending about what we need them to do. Additional functionality within this area is that we can show how it is we can have um, power demand response. And what this is, is that when power companies have a need to reduce the load on their um, supply, they can send out a message to a project asking them to shed HVAC, shed lighting loads. From this, we would receive a message and we would start to dim lighting or turn lighting off within the area so that we can accommodate the load shedding requirements. There are multiple stages of load shedding, so we can have um, some of the lamps being switched off and some of the lamps being dimmed. And then when we receive the most extreme cases, we can dim the lamps right down and only have the absolutely quintessential lamps on, making sure that we are still able to operate within occupancy comfort. When we are operating within the power demand response mode, none of the overrides will be able to force the lights on. And so with this sort of functionality, it's extremely important that we are able to meet the regulatory requirements of power demand response and that the occupants cannot override the system. But then when the uh, situation has passed, the power companies can send a message back to the system to say that the power demand response requirements have passed. We, the system will then go back to performing its requirements before that we're receiving that trigger. And just turning off a few of the areas, we can demonstrate the next feature of an emergency response. So this is picking up a dry contact input from an emergency system, and when this happens, the Dynalight system will respond by turning all of the lighting on. Once we've received this message of, a, of an emergency response, vice versa occurs where none of the user interfaces can now switch off the lighting. So there can be no accidental switching off the lighting in an emergency or a panic situation, and we can make sure that the occupants are able to sort of see their way through and make sure if required that they can leave the area. And likewise, once the emergency has passed, we can then receive the message from the emergency system, releasing that dry contact, and the system will go back to performing exactly what it was doing previous to the emergency response. Now we're gonna push the system into an evening mode. So this is where the system is going to have the tunable white lighting set to a very warm temperature. This is something where we're hoping to be able to relax people and bring their energy levels down at the end of the day. And we're also going to make the system recall different presets from the sensors again. But part of this part of the demonstration, we're going to be focusing on the boardroom and show how it is that the boardroom can trigger different scenes, but also push different messages to user interfaces and to different areas. So with this station here, we have the boardroom. Um, we can go through and select different preset scenes. Um, we can also ask the system to change the color of the RGB lighting. Uh, we can also just push it into um, a warm preset or a presentation preset, whatever the case may be. But what can happen within the boardroom is they can request for service. So perhaps they want drinks or coffee for the important meeting. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to press the service request button. And what this is going to do is flash the lighting in reception. It's also going to flash a button on the reception panel. So the request has been sent, drawing attention from the people in reception that there is a request for service within the meeting room. Now, the people in reception can now acknowledge that this request has been sent. So I'm going to press the boardroom button, which is now flashing. And this is going to flash one of the boardroom lights once. This is a demonstration about how the system can be configured to be able to perform a sequence of logic. So depending about what the clients are looking for, we can program that up into the system to be able to match their requirements. It is a very simple demonstration of the Dynalite's tasking ability in being able to have these custom scripted responses to different button presses. Now we're gonna push the system into an after hours mode. What happens is that we are going to flash the lights 
warning the occupants that we're about to switch the lighting off. And then once this is passed, we are then going to turn the lighting off. Now, in after hours mode, the sensors have been programmed so that they're going to be communicating to much more than a single area. What I mean is that when there is an occupant detected within an area, it is also going to light up an egress pathway, making sure that the uh, occupants have a safe exit to within their workspace. So if we show an occupant in area A, not only does the system turn on the local area A lighting, but it also turns on pathway lighting to reception. Likewise for sensor B, sensor C. Now we've seen with the sensors that they're able to turn around and have dynamic timeouts, calling up different presets, but also showing how it is that the sensors can call upon multiple areas. Once the system has detected that there are no occupants, it will then go through and turn the lighting off behind them. And this is a really good example about how the Dynalight system can be configured so that we're able to achieve the energy management requirements of making sure that unoccupied areas are switched off, but also the safety requirements that occupied areas still have an exit path. In the last mode that I'm going to be demonstrating, we've pushed the system into a security response. And so for this, uh, what we're finding our clients have uh, programmed into the system is that every time the lighting is triggered, they will turn on every alternative lamp. But the problem with this is that we are over dependent on these uh, set of lamps to always turn on, and this can drastically reduce their life expectancy. With the way that the sensors have been configured, they will alternate which bank of lights that they will switch on. So that when we trigger the area A, it is going to switch on a single lamp, and then we'll let that time out. And then on the second trigger, it is going to turn on an alternate set of lamps. And so with this toggling of the two light groups, we make sure that the uh, load of being able to illuminate the areas is spread across multiple lighting groups. We're not overly dependent on a single group being able to meet the demands. And we're really able to show how it is that the sensors can have this logical response for every time that they are triggered, making sure that we're able to get the most out of the lamps and really extend the economical life of the floor. And with the second trigger, we see a different group. Now we push this system back into morning mode and the system begins anew on a new day. That concludes our demonstration. Thank you so much for your time.